Hola! In the last presentation, which was on servlet basics, you have learned what a servlet class is and also the servlet lifecycle. In today's presentation, I will be sharing the various HTTP methods and also how the various web resources within a J2W web application like servlets and JSPs share information with each other. When you click on a link or press a submit button on a web, application, web page in your browser, the browser in the background uses a method, a HTTP method to talk to the server. And you as a developer can specify what method the browser should use within your HTML or JSP pages. For example, let's say you are working for Facebook and you are working on their update profile page. Within this update profile HTML or JSP page, on the form element of your HT, uh, form HTML element, you can specify the HTTP method. There are different HTTP methods that are available like get, post, delete, put, but the two famous ones are get and post. When you use a get method within your update profile page, the, all the fields that the user fills in will will be appended to the URI or the URL when the browser sends the request to the servlet container and the servlet container in turn looks at the method being used and since it's a get method it will retrieve the incoming parameters it will try to retrieve the incoming parameters from within the URL uh, the problem here is there is a limit or there is a length limit on the URL string and so the number of parameters you can pass in uh, is also limited. If you use the post method, all, all the parameters within your HTML page, the various form elements come in as a stream. So there is no limit on this stream. You can send any number of fields or you can even upload files using a post method within your HTML page. Your servlets and JSPs within a web application can share information using the various classes that your web container provides them with at runtime, like the servlet context, HTTP session, and HTTP request. These are the interfaces which your uh, servlet container like Apache Tomcat will implement and provide your servlet class with at runtime. The servlet context has all the information about your web container and also it carries the information you specify within a context param element within your web.xml. I will discuss more on this when I do the hands-on example. I will show you the various elements within a deployment descriptor file, the web.xml file and also how to retrieve the context parameters within your servlet class using the servlet context object. Using the servlet context object, you can set attributes on a servlet. All these, all these three interfaces here have methods which allow you to set attributes. Attributes are nothing but objects. So let's say you set a string. Um, you can give it a name and a value, a name value pair, and the value could be anything. It need not be a string. It could be a database connection. It could be a file. So once you set it at a servlet context level, that's like setting it for the entire web application. At, from that point in time, you, you set that in servlet A and you can access it in servlet B or C or any other JSP pages or any other servlets within your web application. Whereas the HTTP session is per session. And I'll be talking more about session management in the next presentation. But again, your servlet container will create a HTTP session object and you can set attributes on a HTTP session class within one servlet and any other servlet or JSP page within that, within that session, HTTP session, will have access to those attributes. And that is how they communicate, all these resources communicate with each other. And the last one here is HTTP request. This is, uh, as the name itself indicates, this is at a request level. So if you set something here, any other servlet or JSP to which your request is being forwarded to will have access to those attributes. So sharing information is very easy and these are also called scope objects. 
because they define uh, the scope, the servlet context is at a web application level scope, whereas the HTTP session, as I said, is a session scope and anything you set into the HTTP session will be available to any servlet classes or JSP pages within that session. And the HTTP request is a class that's created by the container and is given to your service method if you remember from the last session. And anything that's set into the HTTP request object will be available only for that request. So if when an incoming request comes in, if your servlet redirects or forwards that request to another servlet or a JSP, you can set something in the servlet A and then you can forward your request to servlet B and the servlet B will be having access to anything you set in the servlet A. These are more easy to explain when I do the hands-on and I'll be uh, giving you more examples there. To summarize this short session, you now know the various HTTP methods and the two famous ones which are GET and POST. You know what the difference is. When you use a GET, all the parameters within your HTML page are appended to the URL. So there is a limit on the length of the URL and so uh, is the limit on the number of fields you can pass in using the GET method. And with POST, all the parameters and the information is sent as a stream. So you can even upload files using a POST and that's the preferred way uh, when you develop your real web applications. And you also saw the various interfaces within the servlet API that a container provides you your servlets and JSPs with at runtime and using these your servlets and JSPs can share information with each other and these are also called scope objects. The servlet context uh, is the web application scope. Anything set into it is uh, available for the entire web application. Any page, any resource within your web application. The HTTP session scope is per session and I'll be presenting the more details on uh, session management in my next presentation. And the HTTP request is only for that request. Anything here will be available for any servlet or JSP that's, uh, that that request is being forwarded to. The next presentation, as I have said, will be on session management. Until then, keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.